paranormal Karen. She's so spooky. Paranormal Karen. Funny too. Paranormal Karen. She's so spooky. Oh, and did I mention she's funny too? Yeah. Cha cha cha. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to this episode of Paranormal Karen. So really quickly, I think a lot of you know, last year, 2023, what a mess, and it didn't really get easier. So I tried to tape all my podcasts. So these this week and next week are two podcasts that were supposed to air in November, and I somehow smashed them together <laughs> so that um, the first part was Dana and the second part was Becca. And so that was uh, that was crazy. So this week, Dana's episode is airing, and next week, Becca's episode is airing. Both fantastic episodes. Again, we're a little behind on the dates, but they were so good. Um, so here they come. Also, I wanted to say, you'll hear me talk in this episode about taking Dana's, uh, we taped it before I took her mediumship class. I am giving you a hundred percent recommend, I'm giving you 200% recommendation for Dana and Matt as, um, their mediumship class, their TikTok, their everything. It, the class I took with them checked off every box I can imagine. They were fantastic. It moved quickly. We weren't sitting around doing nothing. They squeezed so much in, so understandable, very reasonable cost. Um, they could even raise that. It was that good. I have had a crazy 2023 and 2024. I'm going back because it was, um, let me just say that. So you'll hear me refer to it in this podcast. It's highest recommendation. Okay. Thanks for putting up with my nonsense. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Please join the Patreon. I'm going to throw that ad in right here. I'm building up that Patreon. You get a weekly energy report and uh, you can get uh, two episodes of In Bed with Karen, Paranormal Karen, and some other stuff. But enjoy today's podcast. Uh, my apologies to both uh, Becca and uh, Dana. I'm glad it worked out. And here you go, folks. Enjoy. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Paranormal Karen. Uh, another great show. I'll tell you, I was piling up to finish the end of the year and I reached out to these people. Some I haven't reached out to before, some in a long time. And today's podcast is way overdue. Uh, Dana Willie should have been on a long time ago. I watch her on TikTok all the time. Uh, so today's the day. Also, I forgot to promo. Join my Patreon and... Uh, whatever get book a reading i'm sorry i can't uh it's been a long week Aug we're in august right now and august has been long uh but i know this is coming out in november and uh dana how are you today i'm so good thank you for having me on and yeah this whole year has been crazy and i'm sure you know i know we're we are recording this in august but like november is going to be here before we know it so here we are. It, yes, it is. As it, as of August, I just had the second bat loose in my apartment. Uh, second one. Because one wasn't enough. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, I'm fully, I have my winter coats out because for anyone that needs to know, you open a window and you turn off the light and you close the door. So they eventually fly out, like actually pretty quick, whatever they use their sonar or whatever the hell they have going on. But I feel like I'm like, if there's two, everybody's like, yeah, you got an infestation. So I got my winter coat out for whenever I have to do that again to try and not get rabies. But on a much brighter topic, uh, Dana, you are fabulous on TikTok. I see you all the time. And you, uh, first of all, this is why you should follow Dana uh, on TikTok or Instagram, is you put out so much helpful content for free. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we charge for stuff too, but no, I really, um, I, I like education and I, I really, um, believe in empowering people. I know it's so weird. <laughs> uh, I think with spiritual stuff, it can get very woo woo. And it's funny because my TikTok name is Dana Willie Woo. Um, so, you know, we're all in the woo. And there's nothing wrong with the woo, but I feel like sometimes when we get into the woo or the spiritual, 
we get very ungrounded and we lose our power and we feel like we have to give our power to somebody else, um, especially with mediumship. So that's kind of my neck of the woods. I do tarot and I do psychic work and I do a lot of other things, but especially with mediumship, you know, we're talking to something intangible. We're talking to your loved one. And so many people are dealing with grief and get taken advantage of. And I hate that. And I want to empower not only people who want to develop this ability, which I believe everybody has an ability to do this, but also like not everybody needs to book a mediumship reading with a medium to talk, to have some kind of communication with their loved one. So I like to empower people to say like, you don't need me to talk to your loved one talk to your loved one. I like to empower with education. Um, I think that there, you know, is some cool paranormal stuff out there. I know you're paranormal Karen, but I think there's also like not everything we see on TV is true. You know, there's a lot of sensationalism and I really believe on empowering people with discernment for yourself. Does it make sense? Um, can we rule out mundane? Um, because when we can rule out mundane, it makes the magical more magical. So I think the more that we empower people, the more that we, because we're all souls living a human experience. And when we remember that we're just souls living that human experience and we have the capability to communicate with other souls, whether they're here on earth or they've passed on, changes the game completely. That's fabulous. And you know what else? I'm sure, folks, you can hear. This is really uh, your magic. Your authenticity meter is off the chart. Like, you just are you, and that is uh, fabulous. And I think that's why it works. And you were even doing some stuff, uh, which is like, what color is the crystal in my hand? Like really fun stuff that I think people can really grab onto. And you know what else? I love what you said, because, um, there's a lot of, there was a very famous medium that I, kind of um she used to do a thing in LA where you it wasn't as expensive as doing her training and she always said all mediums are psychic but all psychics are not medium and she was very like I'm better than you and I just hated that because I think these are all skills that anyone can learn if they put their mind to it right oh I love that you said that because we actually so my business partner and I uh, Matthew Tao um, we changed that saying. We said that all psychic, all, all mediums are psychics, but not all psychics want to be mediums uh-huh. because all everybody can be a medium. It just maybe they don't choose to be. And we are true believers in that we shouldn't shame anybody because they're not a medium. Um, it's just something that either you decide to develop or you decide not to. But what actually happens is if you are a medium and you don't develop your psychism, it can actually weaken you as a medium because as mediums, we use our psychic abilities. As mediums, we communicate with the other side using our ability to see our clairvoyance, our ability to hear our clairaudience, our clear knowing, our claircognizance. Our clairsentience is our most important clair that we use. That's our clear feeling. That's where we pick up emotions, sensations. That's how we can make might feel a heart attack uh, for. Whoops. Hey, I just restarted that. We had weird computer problems or dead people rushing us. If we were that kind of sensationalized <laughs> show, dead people were stopping Dana. Uh, okay. So you, uh, do you remember where you left off there? Yes. Okay. okay. So going back to not all psychics want to be mediums. Right. It's not that they can't be that they don't want to be because anybody can do this work, but good mediums continue to develop their psychic abilities because we use them in communicating with your loved ones on the other side. We see, feel, hear, touch, smell, taste. We really feeling is the number one way that we're going to communicate with your loved ones on the other side. So having all of those and actually developing our psychism is going to make you a better medium. So shaming and being like, oh, yeah, you just do psychic work is actually very dismissive. And it's actually weakening your mediumship practice not to strengthen those. So we really 
we, we we really push people to develop their psychic abilities. And I know you had mentioned my little like, what crystal am I holding test that I will, I'll do like some intuitive exercises and things like that on my uh, TikTok channel. But we also do like a spiritual fun day um, at mattanddana.com um, at our business uh where it's just fun and we do a lot of intuitive exercises like that, but it's not ever about guessing the item. It's finding out how things come into you. So Ooh. you might see a color. Oh, can I, uh, I want to, can I jump in real quick just because of two things? Yes. You're literally uh, like my line of questions. You're already like to the part I couldn't wait to get to. We skipped over a whole bunch, but we'll just go backwards because it's paranormal Karen and they know I have ADHD. So, um, so exactly what you were saying. So when you were doing what color is the crystal, because here's the thing, folks, I have an appointment next a couple of weeks with Dana and Matt, and I'm going to tell uh, my situation because I'm betting there's a lot of uh, people out there have the same. And then I'll tell you what, what with the crystal, why, what I love about it or how I do it. So I, I, uh, I, read tarot. I'm lucky. That's my business. I do 12 to 20 appointments a week, depending on how many I want. So, and you're talking about some psychics are like, oh, you use the cards. And I'm always like, everyone just do your thing. (laughs) But but I get a lot of mediumship in my readings, but I can literally describe the person. uh, uh, Actually, some of it, this sounds weird, but some of it is alive. I guess that's psychic stuff. So I got someone's say their father that passed away. There's I, the description is to a T that's him, everything like knocking off 10 things. So we know I have him there. I can't break into the conversation where I feel like I'm talking to him. And I know that sometimes I could be psychically picking up who he was, but not mm-hmm. mediumship talking to the conversation with him. Does that make sense? Did I have that right? That makes perfect sense. So a couple of things there. First, I I always call tarot the gateway drug to mediumship. <laughs> so it happens. I can't tell you. And it's funny. I, I taught a, a tarot, an intuitive tarot class. I te- usually teach it once or twice a year, but I always warn my students like, listen, eventually you guys are going to want to be mediums. This is the gateway drug to mediumship. It's going to happen. Um, but it's beautiful because that's kind of how it starts to happen. And it's beautiful that you're starting to no- notice that. But we have to remember, kind of going back to what I said before, that feeling is the language of spirit. And it's not so much a back and forth conversation, but it's almost going into a passive state when you're in that, when you've kind of established, okay, I have somebody here of what does he want to tell me? A lot of times the biggest mistake mediums make, developing mediums make, is that we feel like we've got to tell a story from point A to point Z, and it doesn't work that way. They're going to bounce all over the place. We as humans want to make sense of the story. And it, and and our thinking mind gets into it. And then we fall out of that passive mind state and go into our thinking mind state. And that's not where we want to be as mediums. Okay. So you kind of go into this kind of like freak out state of like, I want to make sense <laughs> of this. And it's supposed to feel like this. And it's never going to be like this back and forth communication. Actually, it discourage you from having a back and forth conversation with spirit. I know it's weird, right? We actually discourage you from asking the spirit world any questions when doing mediumship. Like, tell me about what your favorite color was. What's your sign? Where was your favorite place to vacation? (laughs) We just leave it to the spirit world to tell us what's important and what they want to share. Because we have to remember that we have a limited amount of time to share whatever information comes through. Okay. I I have a quick question. So um, is it uh, wh- what I was doing because I was like, listen, I think I have the person, but I, 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 and also I'm very conscious. Like if people paid for a tarot reading, I don't want to waste any time or learn on their time. So, uh, which right. is probably not a good, uh, putting that rush on everything, but I always try to say, let me see if I can find something so that, uh, uh like almost something that that the spirit would know and the person would know. Is that a wrong way to go at it? Like your mom had a ring that said JJ Walker on it or something like that. Is that wrong? (laughs) 
just I I like the, setting the intention. To ju- I like I always refer to it as just be an empty cup at that time. Okay. And and just know that and trust the intelligence of the spirit world that they're gonna do that anyway. Um, that you don't even really necessarily have to put that intention out there, but you can do that. But anytime we go searching, we're looking for an expectation of what that piece of evidence is going to be. And you don't know what that is. Sometimes just simply saying a color might be the thing. Like, do you know why I'm seeing the color yellow? That could be the thing that breaks them down into tears. Like, oh my God, that's, that was their favorite color. He was jaundiced when he died. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) You just, you don't know what it is. Um, I mean, I, I've said some of the most, I've said mac and cheese and people have broken down in tears. We don't know as the medium what is going to be that amazing thing that we're going to say that is going to move them. So we just have to get our human out of the way because then if we kind of, I want that aha evidence to say, oh, I definitely have them. We don't know what that is. So we just have to be that empty cup and say, okay, whatever they put in my empty cup, I'm just going to give it. I'm going to trust that that's what that is. And if it hits, it hits. Um just kind of getting, it's about getting ourselves out of the way, having it be a a lot less about us and not having any expectation or desire of how it's going to roll out. It's hard. That's the hard part about mediumship. I love that what you said though, about um, tarot being the gateway, because um, I feel like right now it's, it is going hand in hand. And I had never heard anyone say that. So uh, everything has its web, but like, I think this might be it. Sometimes when I really get into the zone, like I, uh, at that point in the reading where I'm just talking and I don't even know what I'm talking about, it's just coming out. Um, I, that is usually when I connect. So that must be when control issues go away and mm-hmm. it's just information coming in. Absolutely. So those are the things that for those of you guys that are listening, so for Karen, that's you when you're in that zone with tarot. You've kind of gone into that receptive state in tarot. For some of you, um, it might be you're going for a walk. It might be some, a lot of people when they're cleaning their house, they kind of go into a deep, like receptive state. Uh, it might be in your shower. Um, we have to kind of notice like what happens just before that comes in. What's the what's the thing that puts us into that light receptive state? Um, then we want to do more of that, and that's kind of what what we want to notice and bring in more of when we're when we're doing this work. Okay, and when um, so I used to do like five and six tarot appointments a day, and I don't know. Well, that was when I was really like, I was, I hate to say it this way, but I was a really happy person and I had that energy. And now I'm down to three and four because it makes Mm -hmm. me so tired. Now, does mediumship sometimes make you more tired than tarot work? Um, that's a good question. Um, I tend to be, I tend to get more energized by mediumship. Um, it's, let's talk, let's back up for a second. So we kind of teach on, um, the power, the power is, um, going back to that feeling, that energy that comes forward. Spirit world uses our energy, come forward and speak to us. And you build up your energy you and build your power. And it's almost, you know, I hate using this term, but it's essentially raising your vibration and to meet their vibration. And so you just have a higher, bigger vibration. And as the connection to the spirit world grows and we blend more and more with the spirit communicator and we're getting information right, that power grows. Um, and I, we've coined it at Matt and Dana, the love bomb. But when you get to a certain level, when the message is coming through and you get this love pouring through the other side, there's no feeling like it that I've ever felt in my entire life. And it will, you, you'll just be on cloud nine. It'll feel better than anything you've ever felt in your, in the entire world to the point where I have a hard time sleeping. If I've done uh, readings late at night, if I read you know, evening appointments, it's really hard for me to, to come down. 
and for me to go to sleep afterwards. Um, I think sometimes with tarot readings or psychic readings, we're really delving into people's personal lives, right? I, it's my it's my opinion and it's my experience through a lot, thousands of readings that I've done that everybody's okay on the other side. They're okay. We're not here on earth, right? right. We're dealing with earth school. I, I lovingly call everything that we're doing here on earth, the lessons we're learning earth school. And it's hard here. There's just, we're all, even on our best days, we're struggling with something where we're always going through something. And you're a tarot reader. I love the tarot because it's, it's cycles of life. So even in the best cycles of life, we still have challenges and we're holding space for a, a sitter. We, we feel that for them where we're moving through those cycles with them. And that can be exhausting. We're sitting through that space. So it is a different, it's a different vibration that we have to sit in sometimes um, in those two spaces. That makes so much sense to me. And hold on, folks, we're going to come back. I love this, Dana. We just went right to the guts of everything. All right, folks, we'll be right back. Are you a seeker who craves a life of authenticity and freedom, but can't seem to get unstuck from experiences of duality? My name is Z, and I spent years stuck in victimhood craving enlightenment, but trapped in a cycle of two steps forward and what felt like a hundred steps back. I felt like I was drowning in fear and shame until I started learning about the nervous system. It turns out that while we are spiritual beings, we are only able to be here because of these physical bodies, and the nervous system is just trying to keep us alive by bringing us back to fight, flight, freeze responses. We can get stuck in these defense states, or we can gain resilience by developing a respectful and trusting relationship with our nervous system. If you're ready to learn more, check out my YouTube channel and join us for online coaching and courses by going to www.anexperiencer.com. That's anexperiencer.com. See you there. And I don't know if you've experience this, but I think we need a higher level of protection right now. I just feel, or maybe it's me. And I have to say, there's a couple of things about moving to Utica where I live now with taking care of my folks. It's a very, very heavy energy anyways. The whole place is heavy. So I think there's some, uh, maybe a little bit of burnout and, and other things making me tired, but I had never heard that. And I love that love bomb about spirit. Now, uh, and again, it's, I'm with you. It's, it's like, sometimes I say light worker because I just don't have a better word. I don't like that word, but I don't have a better word. But so you were talking about sort of raising the vibration or the frequency to talk to spirit. Now, when you're talking to what I'm going to call a ghost, or they like, I guess somebody said earthbound spirit is better, but someone that's not supposed to be here, that's a lower frequency, correct? Well, we're going to probably agree to uh, disagree on that. I don't really believe in earthbound spirits. Oh, okay. Um, I don't have experience with earthbound spirits. I don't believe that we are ever, um, I don't believe anybody is ever stuck. I have never had any proof or evidence that anybody is stuck and that anybody doesn't die and then completely cross over immediately. Do you... It, it, but do you believe it? No be, evidence. Do you think it could be fragments? But I, what I believe it is, is it's like grooves in a record player. It's uh, residual energy. Okay. Things that gets, it's energy that we're, that we're picking up. Um, I've done multiple paranormal um, investigations. Um, here's the thing about spirit. And I think there, there's so much that can be misinterpreted. Um, in paranormal or any type of investigation. Spirit, our loved ones can be anywhere. <laughs> they, they, just because they've crossed over and they've died doesn't mean that they can't still be with us. And a lot of people can misinterpret that as they haven't crossed it over. No, they're just always around us. To me, my the spirit world to me is just another layer um, or another dimension on top of this one. Just, you know, with uh, the right sensitivity, we can shift our awareness to that, to where they're at. They're not confined by time or space. 
Now, are they stuck in these certain places? No. Um, Can they go to these certain places if you bring your awareness to them? Sure, they can show up and say, hi, I'm here. But does that mean that they're stuck or a ghost or earthbound in that area? I would argue no. What we really are looking for is some type of intelligent communication Mm -hmm. from something in that area, not just something that is going to replay over and over and over and over. We see a lot of residual activity in a lot of these spaces, something that we're going to see play over and over and over and over again. But that's not intelligent. That's not what I would call an intelligent source, if you will. See, I have seen the intelligent I have had that intelligent conversation, the intelligent back and forth. But this is very interesting because someone told me about a group that of mediumships uh, or, or a group that teaches mediumship that the first thing they will tell you is there's no such thing as demons. There's no such thing. Never happened. Blah, blah, blah. And I know the opposite. And I always wondered if that's just, there's a different connection. Do you know what I mean? Like they're just connected directly to spirit, that level. So not only don't they see the other level, they don't experience it. Maybe? You know, it's it's possible. I mean, here's the thing. I was, um, through my development, I've I've learned from a lot of different people. And it's, it's sometimes I think where you point your perception. Um, I've been told that too. Um, uh, sometimes it's our bias that colors it. Sometimes it's religion that can color it. Um, there can be bad things that happen in bad places. And it can be the human energy that can build into these spaces. Is it truly a spiritual demonic energy? We may label it as that because of a religious context or a religious bias. You know, I also have to always say that I'm very flexible in my belief systems. I don't like to say 100% this is whatever. I, I like to be very flexible in my understanding because... When I when I first was developing, um, I was told, you know, the whole thing like you have to cross spirits over, you have to do this, you have to do this, and I just never saw the evidence behind that people didn't cross over. I was like, this, I'm not seeing the evidence behind this. Where's the evidence? Um, and then I've done, like I said, plenty of paranormal investigations where you're not seeing the intelligence of a spirit communicator being able to answer questions intelligently on questions that you're asking. You're seeing the same sort of thing happening over and over again. And that's psychic. That's that's not a true spiritual thing. Can that we have to understand also that human energy goes into these places, right? They are going to go in and they're going to feed into the energy of whatever actually happened in these places. Now I, like I said, have an open and flexible mind. So I go into these places and I'm like, show it to me, do it, do the things I want to show. I want prove it to me, but I want proof. And I go in with a very unbiased uh, perspective and I'm yet to be moved. So that's, that's kind of where I sit. Okay. They, the, uh, I actually, you know, if someone doesn't believe in demons and they're not bothering you, stay with that. (laughs) That's what I say, because the experiences I've had with people that moved into houses that are not public and would not allow an investigation and we wouldn't investigate because of the, uh, you know what I mean? So, Mm -hmm. so we'll agree to disagree on that, but let's go back um, because I do respect, you know, whatever, it's all good. We're going to find out later. We're going to find out all of it later. Um, that, yeah, that's what I love about that. Like when, and, and that's the thing, like, I think we all just understand from our own perspectives, from our own experiences, from our own evidence, our own biases and all of that. And I, that's why I, I always say, Karen, to you that I'm, I'm always flexible. I'm, I also call, constantly call myself a developing medium because 
I know that there's so much to learn. I won't know everything until I'm dead and on the other side and I've and I know it all. And I know all the secrets. I know. And, do, but for and we now, might not even get to know then. <laughs> right, exactly. So I think for anybody to be like decisively like, no, yeah. I think is very limiting. I think that in everything. I think that's just a good rule of thumb. And I have noticed in my own life when I was a hundred percent sure about something, that's usually when you get you're attracting something to prove you wrong. So I never say never anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um so uh well I still so when you you actually have psychic circles also. We do, we do. Um the ones that we do on Sundays, they're called spiritual fun days. Um, and we, you know, when we go back to, everybody kind of can go back to when they were a kid. And this is a question we get all the time. You know, I was able to do this stuff when I was a kid. And then as I get got older, it went away. Well, you know, kind of going back, uh, we get fed paradigms. We get fed religion. We get fed, um, you're making that up. This isn't real, all kinds of things. We wanted to create a space where we're, we kind of go back to being a kid again. We play music, we dance, we get into that relaxed state, we color, um, and we do a lot of different exercises. But it's also, you know, when we're doing intuitive exercises, it's not about guessing the item. Oh, this it's is about, yes, I love this. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's about, it's a, so I will get an item that you, there's no way, there's no way, not even the best psychic out there could actually guess what's in my hand. But it's more about like, is it smooth? Does it feel smooth or rough? What's the general shape of it? How did that information come into you? Did you see it? Did you feel it? Did you hear it? Did you taste it? Did you smell it? Did you know it? That's going to give you some indication of what is your strongest clair. That's the fancy word of, you know, saying how you're perceiving it. That If you're constantly saying, I saw it, 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 we're going to understand that you're probably strongly clairvoyant, which is great, but we want to make sure you're well balanced and we're going to give you some challenges to maybe work on some clear feeling or clear sentience because being well balanced in your clairs is really important. It's going to make you a better, more dynamic reader. Okay. That's just, I want to say that's another fantastic thing you just said that I have not heard before. Okay. Keep going. Yeah. So we, we, we do exercises to not only help you discover what is your strongest, but also give you tools to become more well-rounded. And that's also incredibly important in developing your mediumship because you just, you don't want to be, because I'm sure you guys have all seen the the medium, like I see a blonde haired female, she's wearing a sundress, da, 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 and then that's all they can give. Um, we want a more well-rounded re- reader that can say, okay, now, and I'm feeling that she would have had issues with her stomach. I feel that she would have been very, very shy, but very, um, very funny around her friends and just be a little bit more, more layered in uh, their readings. That's a wonderful tip. I'll tell you, I think that's already the place where I should work because the one thing I have like on, um, well, two things. I guess I don't always calculate which way something is coming to me. Like when you would do your exercise, I would just try and blank out my mind and see what drops in, which is a Mm -hmm. little bit hard. It's hard to learn that. But like when I am sitting and doing a reading and that happens, it's pretty clear. But also it, you know, this is such a weird thing. There was this guy, I was at a paranormal convention. The guy doesn't believe in, in, uh, psychic abilities. And he says, uh, no one's ever got this right somehow. This is why you should always trust yourself. And he says, what is this guy's name? I can't remember. It was a big setup, a big story. And he said, no one's ever got it. And immediately in my head, I saw Sam Elliott, the actor. And I mm-hmm. thought, he's not going to know who Sam Elliott is. So I said, Sam. And he said, no, it was Elliott. Uh, so I was like, oh. And you can't go, oh, I had that. You know what I mean? It was like, yeah. Uh, so that is that you always have to just try, right? That's the hardest part, right? Mm-hmm. So you would be more clairvoyant in that 
regard, right? So pay, starting to pay attention, and we we work with our um, with our students to start speaking on how things are coming forward. So even in mediumship, like I'm seeing a woman. I'm hearing her say, I feel this. I know that this would have been something important to her. And start talking about how the information is coming forward. Even in your tarot readings, you can do that, Karen. Like, um, I see on this King of Pentacles um, that you feel a lot of security with your job. But I also know that this would have been something that would have been really hard for you because that's coming in clear cognizance, oh, you know. Okay. So you can start to like use this verbiage of like, or like, you know, uh, oh gosh, the Ace of uh, the Ace of Pentacles is coming forward, but I know that this has to do more with health and career for you. Yes. That's yes. coming I, in clear cognitively. Okay. You. So almost like I know, or I can feel, and, and as I say that, I, I know that this has to do with your health. Would you understand something about your stomach? Because I feel something in my stomach area around you. So you can start talking about like, how is this coming into you? How do you know, feel, see, hear all of those things? You know, it's funny when I read, one of the things that is, um, I read very fast. I, I like, I know people that just come with a half an hour and rail off questions and I rail off answers because my, my instinct is just keep talking. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that's very interesting because I, no, I have been doing those things. And now to be conscious of them would probably make them stronger, wouldn't it? It possibly could. And and just also knowing, even if you just did it for like a day, just being aware of like, I, if, if it's all, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, or I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, you know what your strengths are. Mm. Okay. Awesome. That's great. I'm game. I'm game for you. Um, because obviously you're a dope psychic. Um, have you ever tried to read without your cards, but use your cards in your mind's eye? Yes. In fact, on an investigation or that happens quite often. And uh, I always tell this story, but my uh, spirit guides, I made a deal that my spirit guide looks like uh, the emperor. And literally when people read for me, they see an emperor. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yes, I actually, and I've done that on investigations or where there was issues. So that's a great, I think, I just think I must have been a tarot reader in another life or I knew Pamela Cohen because like, I just love them. I can't tell you the, I will just forever learn more and more and more and more and more about tarot. So I, whatever anyone thinks, but I, I feel like my readings are 50% on the cards and 50% off. Does yep. that make sense? Yeah. Oh, totally. 100%. They're just, I, I, I think of the cards for me as conversation starters. Mm. They're almost like, I don't know how much uh, your readings for you start this way, but most of my readings are like, they don't even know why they came came to the party. And I'm like, you booked the reading. I don't know why you're here, but let's find out. So they can become like a little bit of a conversation starter. Okay, well, let's see why you're here. <laughs> and then I just go from there, you know, but yeah, yeah, that yeah, usually with me, I'm pretty, uh, I sort of lay out this is how I do it. Uh, this is how you can get the best answers. And so and if they uh, the other this is my biggest thing is when someone asks me something or um if they want to ask a question like uh first of all well I don't I don't want to go down this route because I want to hear you not me but like the other night someone said will I ever be happy and I was like okay that's not how you want to word that question let me restructure that question for you how you become happy or what's happening in there so I will help people if they don't quite mm -hmm. understand what they want to know but yes a cold read I always start with like here's what the energy is telling me that's always the first one out yep yep I love that I love that oh yes Yes, I, I, yep. <laughs> it yeah. just made me laugh. It made me laugh because I've been there. I'm like, okay. You know, I used to work at a metaphysical shop and I would always get the the people that were like, hee hee hee, let's go get a tarot reading. I've never done this before. And they would just show up in my uh, room and they would stare at me. And I'm like, so what can I do for you? And they're like, we've never done this before. And I'm like, okay, do you have any questions? They're like, wow, oh, no. <laughs> So that's that's I, how I would start it. And I am with you on that. I um 
I'll never forget. There was this girl I read for and she went and told her therapist and her therapist who actually was okay. I, I shouldn't say this, but the therapist was so taken with what I read for the client that she booked a reading, but she said she was going to tell me nothing. She was going to sit there with her arms crossed and not talk for an hour. And I was like, okay, I get it. But listen, people don't pay for a reading if you're going to test someone or something. And in the end she was happy, but I was like, mm-hmm. why, what do you, you know what I mean? Like it was just really weird. Yeah, no, that happens. That that happens. It's, you know, yeah, we're we're really big on, well, in a mediumship reading, t- tarot readings are different than mediumship readings, and and there can be more back and forth on a tarot reading. On a mediumship reading, we really ask, um, or I ask personally, that the only validation that you give me as I'm going going is yes, no, or I don't know. Mm. Um, I don't really, if you want to validate a little bit, that's okay, but I don't want you to give me any information I haven't given you. Yeah. So sometimes you'll, you know, as they're saying, yes, you might get it. Yes. You know, something like this. Um, but one day we were doing a, I was doing a reading for somebody and I, they had their arms crossed the whole time, stoic fate look on their face. And they were like, yes, no. Mm. Yes. Yes. And I was like, oh my God, like just nothing. Like the <laughs> poker face on this on this person. And then at the end, she she just like the the poker face went down and she that was the best reading I've ever gotten. I was like, Are you <laughs> sure? Because you didn't look like you enjoyed it at all. I love that. That's you know, that is true. I always tell people this story. And um and uh this is can apply to psychic stuff but Milton Berle was doing a show and he's just destroying it except for this one woman that would look down and shake her head no and he was like you know in comedy you can become obsessed with that one person that hates you he changes up his material he goes clean he goes dirty that woman just keeps shaking her head no he becomes so obsessed with her he goes out to find her in the show room when everyone's leaving he puts his hand on her shoulder and she shakes her head no and says you are the funniest person I've ever met. Like it was just the way she (laughs) laughed. So I always, when I went to on the phone readings, I felt like my readings got better and more accurate and more free. And right now that's kind of all I do, except if I do a show, but I feel like the less, uh, whatever fidgeting uh you know moving around looking surprised i like it with less of that but um Mm -hmm. but that's a great tip on the medium show okay we'll be right back and i actually feel like we're doing this whole podcast backwards because i'm going to ask you how you started all right everybody we'll be right back hey everybody how's that spiritual awakening going I know. Don't worry. Help is here. Highlyspiritualperson.com is a haven for spiritual misfits and empaths navigating spirituality and mental health. My friend Camille has a plethora of resources on her site to help you on your spiritual journey even if you're just starting out. It includes individual and collective Reiki sessions, personalized guided meditations, sleep affirmation tracks, and so much more. Camille has so much to offer. She's going to be on my podcast in December. I can't wait to talk to her. Her blog posts and podcast episodes explore spirituality and are great for folks carving out their own path. She has written two easy to follow guidebooks, one on breathwork and the newest book, is called Manifestation is Easy, and it features 22 step-by-step manifestation techniques, as well as tips and advice on how to overcome the most common blocks and start changing your reality. Go to highlyspiritualperson.com. I promise you, you will get lost in how much information is in there. It's one of my favorite rabbit holes. Okay, so Dana, were you always... uh woo woo, shall we say, or did you grow into it or did you lose it and then get it back? How, what is your story? My story? I mean, I, I can look back now and be like, I had this my whole life, the whole time, the whole time I had this. (laughs) Um, but, um, it it was something that I, gosh, I remember when I was a little girl and knowing that I had a grandpa that had died in his room and I would run by that room all the time. And I just felt something. And I remember telling my mom, 
he died in that room. And I got this look on her face, like, how did you know that? And it freaked her out and it freaked me out. And after that, I was like, oh, so this is something we don't talk about. Cool. And I shut it down. And as I got older, I lost somebody very significant to me. And right before they died, they said goodbye to me. And I felt them leave leave the, their body um, on the way to the hospital and to the second, to the moment, the time they left. And from that moment on, they were always with me. And I just kind of figured that like that was normal, that I just, that that person was just with me and that was just part of my life. It was like totally cool that I just totally talked to that person my whole life. And I just dismissed anything else that would happen. And um, about 2017, it was like, okay, I can't ignore this anymore. It had gotten so loud. It had gotten way bigger than me just talking to this one loved one. I was going to the grocery store and talking. I had everybody's loved ones kind of popping up and wanting to say hello. Um, I had uh, just a propensity of like psychic hits happening out of nowhere. Um, And it just, I felt overwhelmed and just like, I can't, I can't do it. And so it was like this pool of like, it's time, it's time to figure this out now. Um, And so I just went headlong into it. And I started with tarot. Mm -hmm. Um, I did a lot of it privately on my own. And I picked up a tarot deck and started like tapping into situations on my own. And then I would use tarot cards to validate whether it was right or not. And I I was, and I started growing that. Um, and then I started going to development circles. I remember going to development circles saying, okay, I go to a development circle and I'm good at this, then I will pursue this. Otherwise, I'm just going to walk away. I did that. I think I made that deal like 20,000 times. Like, I'm just going to do this. And if this doesn't work, then I'm walking away. And I went to my first development circle and I remember calling my husband on the way home saying, shit, I'm actually good at this. I, I'm, I'm, this is, there's something to this. Ian, um, long story short, um, in 20, late 2019, I started reading for the general public and, um, and here I am. I fell into uh, teaching I, and mentoring. I don't know how that happened, but here I am. It's one of the things that um, I love doing more than anything. Um, it's really brings me a lot of joy. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, I don't, I, and I'm just here along for the ride. I, I never thought I always wanted to be a medium. Um, I, I would, Oops, and actually, Hey folks, I paused for a minute. So you were saying I always wanted to be a medium. Yeah, I always was fascinated by mediumship. Like I'd watched John Edward when I was younger. Like I always like I even worked with a mentor at one point. Like I think I'm a good medium. I want to be an amazing medium. It's something that I really want to continue to cultivate and grow. And I just I worked really hard to develop it even more. And I consider myself a developing medium. Um I I'm going for I'm developing trans mediumship right now. In what's the doing some? What's the difference there with trans mediumship? Is that actual like channeling a person? Essentially, yes. Uh, you go into a deeper state of surrender. Of, of uh, I'm learning about it. I'm going to go learn about it some more. But it's uh, go into an entrancement where you can uh, blend with a guide, or you can even blend with a spirit communicator. Um, and bring through information. Um, so it's it's pretty amazing. Um, and, and it takes a lot of surrender. And when you say a spirit, you just said a speed. Did you say mediator? A spirit? What did you say? Communicator, communicator. like a spirit communicator. Like a is that mm-hmm. a guide in between? Could be a guide. A lot of people will uh, do trans mediumship through uh, with use, utilizing their guides or. Um, they, they may have even bring through somebody's loved one, um, and blend with them and bring them through. Um, uh, sometimes physical mediumship can happen through trans mediumship where, um, ectoplasm can happen and, um, 
a lot of different things can happen um, where things can move around the room. Um, there's there's a lot of crazy stuff that is possible when you deepen your trans mediumship development. So I'm really excited to see where that's going to go. Um, they they have a saying that says uh, trans enhances um, your general mediumship. So what I do is a form of mental mediumship of giving evidence of your loved one being here. It's, it just deepens, deepens what I'm doing. So, okay. Do you separate um, medical mediumship with mediumship or psychic stuff? Because I get a lot of, um, I get a lot of hits on what's wrong or as a guy will get on, I'll be like, you have a headache. And they'll be like, yes. And it's mm -hmm. like, thanks. You know, you gave it to me. No, just kidding. But do you put medical <laughs> mediumship in a whole different area? I don't necessarily, uh, so what I do it a lot like you do, Karen, I'm more in picking, uh, medical stuff, uh, empathically. Um, when I'm picking something up for a sitter, um, I believe that that comes through empathically. Um, for me, I categorize something mediumship wise when it's, I think of it as a triangle. I, it's me as the medium sitter is the one of the parts of the triangle and then the spirit communicator would be the third part of that triangle um so that's why i wouldn't consider it mediumship for me that's not to say there's not medical mediums out there um there are trans healers and things like that that do what that would fall under the medical medium but for me when i've experienced or done anything like that i more am empathically tapping into their energy and feeling what they're feeling in their body. But that's just my personal experience. You, I really think you're, uh, uh, well, I don't have the mediumship part yet, but I feel like maybe I, with the tarot, I feel like you get a touch of everything. Like maybe when people mm -hmm. are doing just psychic, it's such a focus. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that because I don't know, but it feels like, I do a touch of everything, but I'm not going to put a medical mediumship or a mediumship appointment up because I don't do the one like I do the tarot. Everything kind of comes in a little bit, but I don't do the one. Hopefully I will. You know, I've been waiting for this to learn this mediumship. I almost wonder if that's the reason I'm in Utica because it's so haunted or there's, you know what I mean? Like it's so mm -hmm. readily available, but my story was always, no matter what psychic I went to, they said, no, you're a medium, not a, not a tarot reader. And I was like, but I'm a really good tarot reader. <laughs> and then they're <laughs> like, well, then you probably a better medium. So I cannot wait for this appointment with you and Matt. Um, well, I can't wait for it either. I, I love when I say that I love being a teacher and educator on this subject, watching people like you, Karen, get to discover that this was here the whole time for you as well. Um, and it's there for so many people. Uh, if you have an interest in this and you have like this inkling of like, I think this is here, of, of showing you the tips and tools of how to express this and discover this within you. and turning the light on, if you will. It's not like we activate or we don't have any special codes or anything like that, but it's helping empower you and finding that within you. It's my favorite thing to do. Watching the light bulbs turn on uh, is like my favorite thing to do. That's wonderful. And at the end, folks, stay. Uh, we got about five or six more minutes and then stay because all your stuff, like I said, there's a lot out there for free. If you're nervous, you want to dip in your foot in the water. You're a little bit like me. I think we all should raise our prices, but I don't want to because I like my people that come to me at this. Pr Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I know some uh, people get very expensive and that's good and I hope they're doing it, but I like the kind of, I like my uh, clients. So when you were just before, like when you were walking around and you were getting stuff and you knew, was it all a combination or were you hearing it in your head? Were you seeing it? Was it uh, clairaudient, you know, clairsentient? And you just, because I think that's a lot of people, I think it's me and sometimes I just go, whatever, you don't know that, or write it off. You know, I'm like, you don't have your cards. You don't know what you're doing. But it is yeah. actually there, right? Absolutely. I have to remember that 
everything that comes from the spirit world is very soft and subtle. And that's why we have to be in a very passive state um, for mediumship. Can I cuss? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Okay. This is, this is truly my story around mediumship. Um, because everybody that I had seen read and all of that was like, I want to go back. Like I see a, an older male here and he's got, he's wearing blue jeans and he's wearing this and I can see his nose. I wasn't seeing shit, Aaron. I, I didn't see anything. I, but I felt things I knew things, I could hear things, I was smelling stuff. And the thing about it is, is in the end, I probably was seeing, I was getting some visuals, but they were like very quick flashes in my head. They would come and go very quick. And so my opportunity and my development was actually to work on developing my clairvoyance. But that didn't discount the fact that I was a medium all along. I just was stronger in all of those other areas Whereas a lot of people come into mediumship being very strong and being clairvoyant, and they have to work on the areas that I was actually stronger in. So we all, every single medium, has opportunity, has strengths and opportunities. So to be a well balanced medium. Uh, this was wonderful, Dana. Like I said, this was long overdue. Um, and I just what's the story with uh, how you and Matt met or became best friends or uh, how did that happen? <laughs> On TikTok. Thanks, TikTok. No, the funny thing is uh, he I found him on TikTok. He was uh, doing this um, white yellow pages of psychic thing uh, where he was just like no, noting like some really cool readers. And I was like, I know him. I don't know how I know him, but I know him. I feel like I've seen him before, but I can't place him. And, but I just, you know, when you see somebody and you're like, I just know he's supposed to be part of my life somehow. I had that feeling. The funny thing about him was he grew up seven miles away from where I live. Mm. Um, And he ended up making a Yellow Pages of Psychics about me, which was really cool. And we just became friends and then we just decided to start making development circles together. We've done multiple uh, online Zoom events uh, where uh, demonstrate uh, uh, mediumship demonstration events together with a couple of our friends. Um, And yeah, and now we're in business together and teaching together and um, doing some live and in-person events together. And yeah, we're, we're best friends and we have our podcast. Um, I'm a medium, ask me how, and yeah, we just are off and running, but yeah. Awesome. All right. Let's go through the list. Let's talk about all the things. So you do like I signed up for the personal mentoring where I'll be talking to both of you, right? Yes. Yes. We offer a personal mentorship where, and it's a la carte. You can come from work for one, just one session. If you have questions about your spiritual development, you can sign up. Um, and that's for, you get two mediums for the price of one guys. <laughs> and you um, can do it more if like, you're like, I need another one. You can sign up for as many absolutely. as you like, right? Okay, great. Absolutely. But you don't have to sign up for like a four pack or anything like that. You can just sign up for one. We also offer a dynamic mentorship experience and we do that um, essentially quarterly. And it's a it's a limited container. We only take eight students per session um, and it's a pretty intensive six week program. Um, so if you guys are interested in that, you you would need to email us. Um, other than that, we run uh, different classes throughout the year. Um, so just note those if you on our website, you can go to our classes tab. But every single week we have different levels of development circles, uh, starting from our Let's Get Connected, which is just a very, very, very beginner's mediumship development circle to our spiritual fun day, which I think I mentioned was intuitive and psychic development. And then we've got our Tuesday all level circle, which you can still be very, very, very beginner to that too. We have very high level professional mediums that um, attend that. You'll never be mixed with the beginners will never be mixed with those professionals in that circle. So don't worry, you don't have to perform on their level, but we all join together 
Um, and these are all done in Zoom. And then we have a thing on Fridays called Stretch and Flex, where we do all kinds of fun, different activities uh, for a more developed medium uh, that can hold the link for about 10 minutes. Wow, you guys are so busy. And people can get a personal reading with you also? Uh, for right now, the best way to, if they're interested in getting a personal reading with me, I, my own personal web. So that all could be found at mattanddana.com, M-A-T-A-N-D-D-A-N-A.com. Personal readings for me are at danawilly.com. I'm not, I tend to be limited because as you said, Karen, we're very busy. Mm. Uh, my, my personal readings are pretty limited, but you can always join my wait list or check my calendar at danawilly.com. Dana, this was wonderful. Um, so we have everything. I'm going to have the website in the show notes and folks really check it out and go join. Tell them what is your TikTok because you do TikTok more so than Instagram, right? Yes. And I'm well, and I'm Dana Willie Wu on all social media platforms. And that's two W. So Dana W-I-L-L-E-Y Wu and all of them. Uh, d- d- Willie Wu, two W's. Uh, that would be hysterical if your husband's last name was Wu. <laughs> yeah, that would be. I mean, maybe I'm going to have him change it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> maybe you do that. <laughs> uh, Dana, so lovely to talk to you. I can't wait to talk to you in two weeks. And um, yeah, and I hope to maybe I'll have, I, would, I hope Matt would like to come on the podcast too. That would be awesome. And I'd love to have you on my Patreon. Just way too much Rontowski for Dana Willie. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for having me on. You got it, honey. All right, everybody. I'll see you. uh, Hopefully I'll see you on the Patreon or at a show. As you know, my schedule is pretty. um, It's on Instagram or you can get it on the email list at KarenRontowski.com. Thanks to Mike at Uno Rising Media. And uh, we'll see you next week. Paranormal Karen. She's a spooky kind of queen. Paranormal Karen. Normal carry.